Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today let's dive into creating a data grid using Vue.js and Tailwind CSS. Before proceeding, if you find this video helpful, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. So what is a data grid and why do we use it? A data grid is a UI element designed to manage and display large data sets in a structured tabular format using features like searching, filtering, sorting and pagination. That's exactly what we will build today. So here is the data grid. I try to keep it clean and simple. Hope you like the UI. Before I show you the code, I just want to let you know that I will explain the logic very briefly, just enough that you can use this component with ease and customize it to your needs. This is a complex component which involves numerous functions. It might confuse a lot of novice developers if I go explaining every line in each function. However, don't worry. I'll make it easy for you. Let's understand what is an API monitoring dashboard just to get a bit of context. So in real life, uh, we have backend developers who develop APIs and then frontend developers get those APIs to fetch the data and display it on the web applications. So in this, using this data grid, we are monitoring all the APIs created by several people and we have a lot of information about each API. So this tells us which API is up, which API is degraded and which is down and all this information about each API and who created that API in your team. So when some API is down, for example, you can immediately reach out to the particular number who created it and then we can sort out the issue. So that is the use case of this API monitoring dashboard. Now let's start with the search bar functionality, search functionality here. So we can search for username and also the API name here. So I'll type product and I get the product catalog API and I can also type in the name of the person who created it. For example, Raj and I can see API is created by Raj. And we can also search for someone who is not on this page, but exists in the entire data. So let me search for example, uh, billing API. You can see billing API was not on the first page, but when we entered it came in the results. So we can search in the entire data. So that's the search functionality. Now let's see the code behind it. So this is just a single component. Uh, we have the search related code on the top, then table and the pagination related code. So in the search and exports, we have this input box where we assign the search term to this input box. So let's copy it and uh, find where it is being used. We have initiated the search term with an empty string and then in the filtered data, we are using this search term to get the results that we need. So first, let me show you the API monitoring data, which is the actual data. I have all this data hard coded here, but in reality, you get the data from API. So you need to adjust when you're using it in real use. And I have even created a duplicated data for sorting and filtering. Why? Because whenever you perform some actions like sorting and filtering, the order of the data is being changed. So we have to keep a track of the original order to perform some actions. For example, uh, I'll show it early. If you click on the heading, it will sort. And second time it will go descending order and third time it goes to the original position again. If you don't have that original order tracked, you cannot go back to the original position. You can only do ascending and descending. So that's why we have this original data. Uh, coming back to search, uh, in this filter data function, we are using this search term. So we are returning the entire data, but includes this search term. So whatever the search term that we type, if it, that is existing in the data, then we will show it. Otherwise we don't. So that's about it. Next, uh, we have these two buttons, download Excel and PDF. These are not functional at the moment because you need to use external libraries for the specific formats that you want to be downloaded. And obviously we don't even have real data now. You can just attach an on-click event to these buttons and like use the libraries that you have to just download the files. So next up we have the table. 
inside the table uh, you already saw the sorting ascending descending and then coming back to its original position and then we have the filter function here on clicking the funnel icon you get these three options that are the statuses of the apis you can customize them so when you click up only the apis with up status are filtered same with degraded same with down so you can also have a combination of filters like degraded and down you want to see and you can close it by clicking on the funnel icon again let's see the code for this inside table for each heading we are attaching an on click event and triggering the sort data function let's copy it so you can see that for each header we are attaching this sort data and in the script we have two uh, functions related to this not functions one function sort data and then sort states where we are storing the state of the original order as you saw we have ascending descending and then the original order coming back on clicking again first we are storing the unsorted means the original order for every uh, heading and then we are using that value in the sort data function to get the original order so we have ascending order descending order and then unsorted order which is the original order as i said i will not go deep into the sorting function but uh, this is the function if you want to make any changes just know that we are storing the original order in the unsorted value and then we have ascending and descending and then we are cycling through these uh, states whenever we click on the he table heading let's collapse these and also we have a filter option that i showed uh, let me go to uh, status so uh, this is the heading with status we have sort data but below that uh, we have this status filter where we have an icon which is showing and hiding the options that we can select and when the options are selected we can see the list of items using v4 we are using the filter options and we are displaying each option inside those filter options let me show it filter options if you see in the script we have defined with up degraded and down options you can add your own uh, statuses here and we have even initialized a selected options means in these three items whatever we select those will be stored in the selected options and then selected options will be used to filter the data let's find where selected options is being used you can see there is a function called apply status filter and there is a watch function with selected options so what this is doing is whenever the selected options is being changed this watch option is this watch function is tracking those changes like it is constantly checking if the values are being changed and if it is changed then it is triggering the apply status filter with this so we are using this logic to filter the data based on the status that we select let's close this now going back that's all with this table area we have this animation it's just tailwind css I just used animate pulse and animate ping class to get this animation uh, there is nothing else and coming to the pagination area we have a uh, first page previous page the existing set of pages then next page and last page so previous and first and we have items per page we can select 5 10 15 you can add if you want 10 if you select 10 then we have this pagination automatically adjusted for two pages and then we have a custom scroll bar here and you can see that the header stays there even though we are scrolling down and at any point of time you can see only maximum of five page numbers here because for example if we have 100 items 
it's not a good uh, ui to have 20 page numbers here so at any point of time it will only have five let me show you that once because now i have only 20 items i cannot uh, show it let me just copy paste uh, the data so we have more items in the api monitoring data we have this data with 20 items uh, i'll just copy them and paste them i copied it and pasted so we have 40 items now as you can see we have only five pages so at any point of time before 20 items were there and we had four pages so if we have 40 there should be eight pages but we have only five because for the reasons that i said at any point of time you can see only five pages at a time it looks good and even when it is uh, viewed in mobile we can see all the page numbers and it is not uh, cluttered so that's about it let's uh, change our data back to 20 items and collapse this now i'll show the code behind this pagination logic so this is the part with pagination we are showing it only if there is more than one page and then we have uh, five buttons one for first page previous page then we are using v4 loop to render these four pages then next page and last page so first page with the function go to first page then go to previous page then we are using v4 to render all the page numbers and whenever we click on the page number we are setting the current page variable to the existing page and then we have the next page and then the last page then last we have the items per page we have assigned this uh, select option with the items per page variable so whenever this items per page changes we are triggering a function that i'll show below and here we are just showing the number of items per page and the range of items that we have on that page in the script you can see the comment pagination related this is the area where we have all the pagination related functions and variables so we have initialized current page by default it is one because when we open the page it has to be on the first page and then we have five items per page by default you can change all this as i said then we have the start index and end index these are used in this paginated data so whatever the items that we are seeing on a page from first to fifth item let me show in the table so here we are seeing one to five and when we go to second page we are seeing six to ten so we need to have a starting index and an ending index to track these items per page so that's where we are using this start index and end index then as i said whenever the items per page changes we have a watch function which is constantly tracking if the number of items per page is changing and if it changes then we are triggering this functionality inside here then we have total pages uh, it's self explanatory then we have the functions which takes us to first page previous page next page and last page and then pages is the function uh, to show the maximum number of pages at any point of time as you see uh, we've given it a range of two means at any point of time we can have only two pages on the left and right which makes five in total the current page on left two and right two so five in total if you want more you can just adjust this uh, number so this is the logic behind it uh, you can go through it and then we have some custom styles you saw in the table when we have more than five items we have a custom scroll bar that is matching with the colors of the table so that's because of this data grid scroll bar and then we have this uh, slide fade animation that is on the filter so as you see we are not done yet apart from all the features that we mentioned earlier we even have a dark mode on this data grid so let's see how it looks i'll just add dark on the parent div 
and you can see it changed to dark mode so it completely supports dark mode and everything is adjusted accordingly and it's completely mobile responsive as well so let me show it so this is how it looks on the mobile as you can see it still is very clean and you can see all the data with uh, horizontal scrolling i have adjusted the uh, download buttons for mobile and i have removed the items per page now we are done that's how we build a data grid i just want to let you know that this is not the most advanced data grid however it has enough features for most use cases if you need an advanced data grid building it from scratch could be very big project itself so i recommend that you use ready made libraries like ag grid material ui or you can find a lot more uh, on the internet most of these libraries support uh, the popular frameworks uh, like react angular view even vanilla javascript so uh, just check what fits your need there will not be 100% customization and even if there is it's not so easy to do so pick your use case and choose accordingly in most scenarios this is okay and for learning and understanding how a data grid is made this is more than enough but if you want uh, some other features like column resizing or like column filtering itself uh, there are a lot of more things uh, you can explore them on the internet thank you for sticking till the end if you found this video helpful all i ask is to like the video and subscribe for more videos on functional components like this